Devon. I wonder what he's up to now. Has he got a buyer in view? Or is he just trying to twist my tail? Celia, you heard what I said. Oh, yes, Thomas. You mean about Mr. Simpson threatening to sell the works? Doesn't it worry you? He's threatened before. This time, I think he means it. You've thought that before. I don't think it's a thing to be sniffy about. It's our living. That's not what I'm sniffing at. Can you smell what I smell? Good Lord. Douglas again. Oh, terrible. Oh, really, Douglas, this is too bad. So early in the morning. I've got it, Mother. Sulfuric hydrogen. And doesn't it just stink of rotten eggs? Much worse. It'll put everybody off breakfast. It won't put me off. I say, Mother, bags me the bathroom next. No, darling. I'm next after Daddy. He's catching the 8.15 for Lester. Oh. Mother, see to his breakfast. Darling, throw all these smelly things down the landing sink. I'm going to. It's no use to me anymore. I've got all the experiment down in my notebook. Hurry. Morning, children. Oh, I'm sure this awful smell will be in my hair all day. Oh, can't you stop him, Mother? Now, Frida, we must let Douglas have his hobby. He's so terribly keen on his chemistry. After all, it might have been white mice. Good morning, Mother. It's awful. It'll soon pass off. Get up, Ruth. Mm. <sighs> I bet he's back the bathroom after Daddy, too. Now I'm next. Oh, I wish we didn't have to live in this pokey house. Douglas's stinks and the smell of cooking all through it. I wish we didn't have to do with only one bathroom. I wish, I wish, I wish. Mother, did you know you beget a duchess unawares? Mothers don't forget, darling. They bear. Budding authors ought to know what words mean. Oh, budding author. <laughs> Much more chance of me being an author than you being a duchess anyhow. Now, now. Bad-tempered author. My brush. Ready, Thomas? Couple of shakes. Agnes? Mum, the master will be down in five minutes. Start him off with his porridge, will you? Yes, Mum. <laughs> hello. Good morning, Dad. Hello, Daddy. Oh. Hello, children. Move up a bit. Let Frida have the bath next. She's a bit peevish this morning. She's peevish every morning. And you only take a sec to chuck on your clothes after your usual cat slick. Usual cat slick? I like that. Go on, Douglas. I don't mind. You go next, after Frida, if you like. I can go up and weigh out some chemicals. Thanks, Douglas. You aren't a bad old egg, though you smell like one. I suppose you don't know that Oxford and Cambridge always call chemistry stinks. I'll smell a lot worse than this before I finished. Phew. Well, darling, have a good day. I expect it'll be much as usual. Oh, well, you never know. Tonight. Lawrence Knight, you know, the great financier. Knox Chronicle, please. Good morning, Mr. Knight. Good morning. Keep these steps clean. Orange peel, sir. Well, I mean, can't you use your eyes? What's that? I rather think it's apple, sir. Apple, orange, or blasted banana. You don't want to be that. 
I apologize, Mr. Knight, sir, on behalf of the company. Providential, I thought, this gentleman being behind to catch you. By George's. Fetched you a nasty smack in the wind. Are you hurt much? Not much. Hardly at all, in fact. Oh, good. Orange peel, you know. Sheer damn carelessness. I might have broken an arm or a leg. Me. I dare say you have time to lay up. And again. I ought to report it. In the public interest, what? Well, but I won't. Oh, thank you, Mr. Knight, sir. Thank you. Sure I didn't hurt you? Quite sure. Good. Going up to London? No, only as far as Leicester. Seen you on this train before, haven't I? I've been on it several times lately, yes. Thank you. Coming in here? Thanks. Good morning, Frida. Miss Berry. Good morning, Miss Berry. Keeping first class company these days, aren't we, Blake? What do you mean? In the Leicester train on Friday. The great Mr. Lawrence Knight, wasn't it? Oh, that. Just a little business discussion with Mr. Knight. It's about the only place you can catch him. He's a very busy man. Better watch, Mr. Blake, that he doesn't catch you. <laughs> You've said it, Mrs. Green. How are your roses doing, Mr. Green? Well, I morning, think they'll Mrs. do well Blake. this year. Ah, oh, Miss Manley, can I have a word with you? What are you dodging about for? It's the head, you chump. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning, Mr. Porter. Ah, Douglas. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Blake. Good morning. Thanks very much, Miss Manley. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Blake. I shall forget. Thanks, sir. Same old tramp, I suppose. Catch Daddy letting us off. Every blessed Sunday. I hate Grandma's house. It smells of apples and mice. Well, come along. Oh, must we go to Grandma's? Of course. Why not, Miss? Why doesn't Edward see to this gate? Edward? I'll have to do it myself or send a man up from the works. Anybody in? So you've come, have you? How have you been, Mother? Not so well. What's to do that you've come today? I wanted to. Oh. Well, you'd better sit down. All of you. Is Edward in? In bed. Where's Isabel? In the kitchen, I suppose. Come along, children, and talk to your aunt. Pity there isn't a Blake among those children. Oh, I don't know. Douglas is rather like I used to be. Not him. I could rely on you at his age. No need to rely on Douglas yet. Let him be a boy as long as he can. That sort of thing can be carried too far. Your father was a boy all his life. And look where that's brought us all to. Lovely day, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. You don't see much what sort of a day it is here. I was chopping the cabbage. So I see. How's your head, Isabel? One of my bad turns is coming on, I think. You'd better come over to the Grove again for a change. I can't. With Mother and Edward. I'm too tired here. Perhaps I can manage it later on. Yes, do. How's Edward getting on at Parsons? Twice this week he wasn't out of the house till gone nine. If he loses this job, I won't go touting around for another for him. He can look out for himself. I'm absolutely sick of him. And what do you think I am, then? Edward, your father all over again. Always after easy money. Like your father selling the works. That's an old story, Mother. How are you off for money? Getting pretty low. Would a pound do? I dare say. I do wish you'd claim your old age pension, Mother. You know I won't. Me go to the post office for public money. You want to humiliate me? But I only mean it would be a little extra for you. Oh, of course. If you can't spare the money, you'd better keep it. Of course I can spare it. It's only that I get a bit hard up at times. 
The children's education costs a lot, and Douglas will have to go somewhere later. It's all your father's fault. Well, it can't be helped now. Perhaps I'll be able to put it right someday. You're a good boy. I don't know what I should do without you. <sighs> Time you were going, I think. You want to go, do you? Well, we ought to. I promised Agnes I'd let her off early. I don't call that much reason for going. Good afternoon, no, however. Besides, I have a pie in the oven. Say goodbye to Grandma. Bye, Grandma. I'll try to be over during the week, Mother. <laughs> Remind me to tell you about an interesting man I met in the train. Knight, the financier. You've heard of him, haven't you? No, I haven't. Well, you will. Why is he such a down on you, Mr. Edward? I suppose because I'm really not much good. Now, don't say that. But it's the truth, Miss Carey. I've never had a job I've thought worth doing. So I've never kept one. My father said when I was a youngster, I'd never make an engineer. I wanted to be an architect. But he tried to make a lawyer of me and... Well, I failed. Still, your brother needn't be so hard on you. I don't see that he could do anything else. He'd never make any excuses for himself. How can he make any for me? Well, it seems hard-hearted of him not to try. He isn't hard-hearted. He's simply got an uncomfortable sense of duty. Sunday after Sunday to that bleak house to see Mother, with that awful, dreary walk to face each time. Can I give you a lift, Blake? Why, it's night. I didn't expect to see you here at this time of day, sir. Always about somewhere, Blake. Always about somewhere. Well, jump in, all of you. We're rather a crowd. Oh, there's room. There's room. I see you go to the King's School, young man. Yes. I went to the King's School. I once wore that same cap. Did you? Uh -huh. Yes. I've never been back to the school. Oh, you should. They'd be proud to have a visit from you. Um, well, perhaps I will one day. I'll tell you what. I'll give the school a cup or something. Will you, sir? That's very handsome of you, sir. Now you can tell your headmaster you've met Lawrence Knight. I expect he'll know who I am. Tell him I promised the school a gold cup. Forgive me running in, won't you? But I have a pie in the oven. Not at all. Goodbye, Mrs. Blake. Goodbye. Glad to have met you all. So that's their great Mr. Knight, is it? Don't forget the gold cup. Oh, no, sir. I won't. Goodbye. 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 Thank goodness the pie's all right. Lovely. It ought to be, ma'am. I put it in dead on the quarter, as the saying is. Thank you, Agnes. You can go now. Girls and I'll manage. Thank you, ma'am. Well, what did I tell you? Isn't he a great fellow? Mm hmm. I'm going to put Mr. Knight into my new story. Ruth, take my coat upstairs. Yes. Golly, won't the chaps cheer when the head tells them about the gold cup at prayers tomorrow? Yes. I expect they will. Douglas, better go upstairs and wash your hands. Frida, help me strain the greens while I see to the potatoes. God bless them all. Never let me fail. Huh? Who's failed? Nobody, Thomas. I was just thinking aloud. Nearly tea time. I call the children. Oh, Douglas. Ruth? Look, Daddy, I... If I get the best note paper, 
Will you write and tell the head about Mr. Knight's gold cup? Can't I ring him up tomorrow? Oh, he's always so mad if you'll come when he's in form and say, telephone. But if you write a note, Dad, perhaps he'll give it out of prayer. And the Japs will cheer like anything. All right. I'll do it after tea. Frida! Coming, Mother! Talking of Frida, Miss Manley gave me an idea this morning. Frida had better be a teacher. Teacher? Why? Because it's a very good job. Look at Miss Manley. Teacher? Oh, I, I couldn't bear it. Why couldn't you bear it? You have your living to earn, you know. Me? Teacher? Well, would you rather go into an office? Office? Oh. Bless my soul, what do you want to do? You don't know what you want to do. You don't know anything. It's time you realize that life is a serious thing. <laughs> what on earth's the matter with a girl? Let's get on with our tea. I'll go out and talk to her later. Good morning, Blake. Good morning. Waiting for me? Yes. Good. Thank you, Sonny. Oh, have a cigar, Blake. I don't think I... Well, yes, I will. Thanks. These engineering works. How much would this fella Simpson sell for? I don't know. Between ten and twelve thousand, I suppose. Hmm. How much does Simpson make out of it? He used to get two thousand. But lately, well, not more than thirteen hundred. Phew. What do you get? Six hundred. Good Lord. No other means? No. A bit of money put into all goods just now would double itself in less than a month. I haven't any spare money. Well, it's no good my helping you to increase what you haven't got, then, is it? <laughs> well, I'll look into your affairs, Blake, and see what I can suggest. If you can suggest a way out, sir, I'll be your debtor for life. But I don't suppose I'll be seeing you. Lest the job's finished. Oh, I shall forget. I never forget anything. I'll let you know. By the way, I've let myself in for presenting that cup at the King's School next month. Are you going to support me? I shall be there, but not on the platform. I'm only a parent, you know. Well, damn it, I don't know how to talk to the young. Well, who does? But you'll be all right. Just throw in something about esprit de corps and mensan and... Nolly Swan, Petit de Fogwa. <laughs> <laughs> and it remains for me now to thank our generous and most enterprising fellow citizen, quod mare non novit quae necit ariona tellus, for his beautiful and valuable gift to his old school. And to introduce to you, Mr. Lawrence Knight. My Lord Mayor, Mr. Headmaster, ladies and gentlemen, boys. I have been thanked, as well as in English, in some dead languages, none of which I understood. <laughs> for giving my old school this gold cup. Well, now, I want you boys to look at it. It's a symbol. It's gold, you see. It's here to remind you that in the pursuit of learning, you mustn't forget the gold. Don't forget money. Don't let anybody teach you to despise money. You can't do anything without it. You can't choose your own life without it. You can't buy leisure without it. Ah. And you can't do good on a large scale without money. Endow hospitals, found schools, help the churches. Believe me, boys, you need money for everything. And that's what this is to remind you of. 
My advice to you is to get out into the world and get out soon. Don't bother about a university education. I never went to a university. <coughs> Looks as if I'm putting my foot in it. <laughs> but perhaps a businessman shouldn't be asked to make a speech. He may tell the truth. Anyhow, let's get on with the most important business of the evening. The presentation of the prizes. Queer speech to make in those surroundings. Perhaps. But Knight's right, you know. All that talk of material success. Haven't we been happy enough? In a way. But I'd be happier if I could own the works. Aren't you excited about going out to Field Place? It'll be a change anyhow from the usual trek to Holly House. Do you think Knight would have invited us all? And on Sunday, if he meant to talk business? But that's his kindness. I'm certain it means something. have done well. <laughs> Pretty girl. Coming along nicely, isn't she? Come and sit over here by the fire, Mrs. Blake, won't you? I hope you weren't cold coming along in the car. Not in the least. Ah, oh, no, it's a nice, comfortable car, isn't it? Sit down, children. Oh, here's the sherry. All right, Sims, thank you. I'll take care of it. Will the children have orange juice, Mrs. Blake? It's so good for them. That'll be very nice, Mrs. Knight. Of course, you haven't taken to sherry yet. Oh, no. No, that's right. Good girl, good girl. Stay off it as long as you can. Very bad for the complexion. <laughs> All the same, when I find myself a bit blotchy, I have a nice glass of stout for my lunch, and it clears it at once. Doesn't it, Lowell? Really? At once, Mrs. Blake. Just you try it. Marvellous. Well, happy days, everybody. I always say a spot of something nice breaks the ice. Don't I, Lowell? Live in Kentham, don't you? Yes. Dull hole, isn't it? Still, perhaps that's because I don't know many people there. Makes a difference, doesn't it? I expect it does. Come along, Blake. We'll let the ladies gossip by themselves. Maudie, I'll have some more sherry in the library. Oh, very well, dear. I'll send it in. Well, it's too wonderful. What did he say? Say? We're going to buy the works. Knight's going to lend me 2,000 pounds, and I've got to raise the other 3,000. I don't know how the devil I'm going to do it. 3,000 pounds? I'll do it somehow. I wondered if you'd let me have your 1500 Of course you can have it. You can have my saving certificates, Daddy. <sighs> Douglas, old chap, this is a great day. Blake's is Blake's again. Topping. Daddy, Daddy, if, if the works belong to you, shall we be rich? I don't know about rich, but we shall be better off. Shall we have enough money for me not to be a teacher? <laughs> don't you want to be a teacher? Oh, Daddy, you know I don't. But you don't know what you want. Oh, I know what I don't want. Daddy, Daddy, just say that if the works belong to you, I don't need to be a teacher. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Daddy.
I'd rather have given the men a dinner. But there it is. I can't afford it. Who do we ask to the party? You want to ask Mr. and Mrs. Knight? Good Lord, no. We'd have to make it a special occasion. Why? Well, Knight's very advanced about food. Game, caviar. We could have caviar. Could we? Oh, darling, you are funny. Funny? Why am I funny? Have you ever tasted caviar? Yes. Often in the old days with Dad. Could we have it at the party? If only to see what Mrs. Green makes of it. <laughs> Well, who is it? It's caviar. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. Miss Berry? Mm, thank you, Frida, dear. Well, I've never eaten caviar before, and I never want to again. Oh, but this isn't right. Not right at all. Real caviar isn't like this. It's a great delicacy. But didn't I tell you? They're out to climb. How do you mean? Well, look at the way they're making up to those knights. And caviar. <laughs> I ask you. Celia, where's the port? It's just behind you, dear. These mushroom financiers. Don't they a bit have to come down? Bang. Knight's no mushroom. He's steady. Works on a safe, small scale. He knows what he's doing. All these chaps go crazy in the end. It's like juggling. They get too many plates in the air. They can't keep them up forever and they can't catch them. So there's a fearful crash. Then the lights go out. I can't get hold of many plates these days. Times aren't what they wear for financiers. Frida, thank you. I think that's why Knight was ready to put a bit into my little concern. Mm. I wonder. <laughs> anyway, he's done me a good turn. And I'm going to ask you to drink his health. All supplied? Yes. Good. Well, your very good health, coupled with that of my friend, Mr. Knight, and not forgetting Blake's. Here's that you mentioned. It's rather a lot to get out of one glass of port. <laughs> we must all have another. Do you know Mrs. Knight? Yes. What age woman is she? Oh, about 47 to 48, I should say. Have you been to the house? I have. Well, was Frida going to Field Place the other day when the car came for her? Yes, and she's going again tomorrow. <laughs> It Celia. Well, I hope, and the children. Yes, thanks. Is Thomas... Uh, yes, he's in his office. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, Celia. Goodbye. Good morning, Mrs. Blake. Do you know your way all right? Yes, thank you. Well, may I come in? Yes, do. You short of money? Not more than usual. What was Edward wanting? Wants me to give him a job. Well, can't you? Can't I? Really, Celia. Do you think I can have a slacker like Edward about the place? What an example for the men. You know your own business best, but I can't help feeling rather sorry for him. Don't you waste your pity on him. I sent him down to the labor exchange. I gave him a pound, though I couldn't spare it. Poor old Thomas. Well, and what brought you here? I've had an idea. I want us to do something for Frida. Something for Frida? How do you mean? Well, she's growing up. She needs to meet young people of her own age and have some fun. I want us to take her to the charity ball. The tickets are two guineas. The tickets are what? Oh, I know it's an awful price. And there'll be Frida's frock. I can't possibly afford it. Oh, Thomas, you must. Just this once. <laughs> Such a lovely time at Field Place. Have you done? Oh, yes, it was. Oh, 
Mother, what's the matter? You look as if you've got something up your sleeve. I have. I've got a surprise for you. And I've got a surprise for you, but you, you tell yours first. Well, well... Oh, go on, Mother. Daddy and I have decided to take you to this grand charity ball. What is it? Frida, what's the matter? Well, your surprise is the same as mine. Mrs. Knight is going to take me to that. Well, there'll be no need for Mrs. Knight to take you now. We'll take you ourselves. Oh, but, but she wants to take me. Mr. Knight is having a party for it. But you'll meet them there, even if you are with us. Oh, but, Mother, it won't be the same. Besides, it would, it would cost so much. The tickets and everything. You, you, you'll save six guineas if I go with the Knights. I wanted to take you to your first dance. But all that sort of thing is over. Girls always go to dances and parties now. Oh, I was so happy when Mrs. Knight asked me. Now it's all spoiled. Why is it all spoiled? Well, you and Father want to go. Want to go? We don't want to go at all. We only wanted to go for your sake. Oh, well, that's... That's all right, then, isn't it? You, you don't need to go. Mrs. Knight really does want to take me. They've asked me back to Field Place for the night. We're to have bacon and eggs in the kitchen at four o'clock in the morning. Oh, won't it be fun? Oh, Mother, may I go? <laughs> yes. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, but where can I get a frock? May I have a really nice one? I, I thought of Morella. Morella? Oh, Mother! <laughs> Good-looking boy, isn't he? We'll find out. Mm. Lull? Lull, I'm speaking to you. Who are those people over there? Speaking to Lady Gaskin now, look. Oh, that young Hewitt of Felton Grange. And the Pelham girls. And Geoffrey Selby. Yourself, young woman? Oh, yes. Yes, I am. I say, Coggy. Oh, hello, old boy. Who's that girl over there with Knight? Do you mean the fair young one? Uh, I don't know. No, 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 no. That lovely creature in red, old boy. Yes, well, I don't know her either. You're being greeted. Oh, oh it's young Hewitt. <laughs> Will you excuse me, please? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Nice. Good evening. Oh, how do you do? Mr. Hobson, isn't it? Hewitt, Maudie. Bobby Hewitt. My wife. Then old Berber there. And, of course, little Frida. Miss Blake. Nice party, isn't it? Such a good band. Too good a number to miss. Shall we? Thank you. That's not a bad idea. What about it, Tommy? I'd love it. I'm sure he'll ask you later. I do hope so. Mrs. Knight, would you... Would you excuse me if I went to tidy my hair? Of course, dear, of course. I'll wait for you here.
Uncle Edward. Oh, it can't be. Thank you. To you. Thank you. Today. Yes, it is black. I'm just as glad. Don't feel in the vein for company. Mm, I thought there was something. You don't often come in at dinner time on Sundays. Anything particular? Or just a deep depression moving over Iceland? <laughs> well? Had a row with my brother. He's angry with me for taking the job of cloakroom attendant at the ball on Friday. Cloakroom attendant? Uniform, livery. Trouble is, my niece was at the ball and saw me. It upset her, went home in tears. Well, I'm not surprised your brother was upset. You mustn't go doing things like that. You, a gentleman, brought up as you've been brought up. Really, Mr. Edward, I'm surprised at you. Don't you begin on me, Miss Carey. This is the only place I get any peace. I know I'm no good, but when I try to be you're all down on me like a ton of bricks, even you. Ah, oh, no, it's not that. I, I don't like the idea of you demeaning yourself like that. All right, Miss Carey. Thank you, Amy. Now, have you had your dinner yet? This will do me all right. You mustn't drink on an empty stomach. Our dinner's just going in upstairs, and if you care to join Mother and me, you're very welcome. Oh, I don't think I could. You're, you're too kind. <laughs> if that's all that's troubling you, come along, then. Ought to be going. Going where? Oh, just going. Now you stay where you are. Here's the Sunday pictorial. If you don't feel like talking. Oh, but I do. <laughs> Only. Oh, she won't mind. The way you kept her laughing at dinner. Why, you fair one a heart, Mr. Edward. Have I? <laughs> I wish I could say the same about. About who? I don't risk it. I dare say you've been in most of the week. What about a walk? If you like. I'll go and get my things on. So Mother sent me along to tell you at once. Oh, but uh, perhaps I oughtn't to have come out with it before Mrs. Knight. Oh, don't mind me. Of course, she's terribly angry. Why? Why? Well, for one thing, she's sure that Edward will drink himself to death. Oh, I don't think he will somehow. Not if she makes him happy. Well, Mother wants Thomas to put his foot down. Oh, but Daddy must. It's terrible. A, a public housewoman. Mm. Now, Frida, we mustn't exaggerate. Nor you, Isabel. Besides, it's none of our business. Edward Blake's of age, and Miss Pollock may be very nice. In any case, we don't want to bore Mrs. Knight with our family trouble. Oh, I'm not bored. Well, I think a fresh pot of tea would be nice for all of us. Come along, Frida. Families are difficult sometimes, aren't they? Aren't they? <laughs> That's cosier. Be friendly, I always say. How is it you and I haven't met before? Oh, well, I don't get out much. You see, I'm so tied to the house. There's my mother, my brother. Oh, is that the one you were talking about? Yes. Well, from what I overheard, I think he's done the sensible thing. Behind the bar of a cosy pub, that's just the life he needs. You think so, Mrs. Knight? Oh, Knight? I do. He wants to be where he can talk to people. I'm like that. Give me plenty of company and a good old gossip, I always say. Oh, so do I. So do I. I thought you did. I knew you were my sort the moment I saw you. <laughs> you must come to Field Place and have a cup of tea and a nice long talk, will oh, you? Oh, thank you. I, I'd that's like if you're to. not too tied up. Oh, no, no, I... I'd never be too tied up for that. Oh, that's all right, then. Bobby Hewitt. 
I imagine he's the reason for your giving this party. Oh, Mother, I hardly know him. I'm looking forward to meeting him. Oh, but... Oh, oh when they give their parties, there's, oh, there's nobody there but us. Besides, their kind of party's so different, you, you wouldn't understand. Why shouldn't I? Darling, I do wish you'd remember. Besides being your mother, I'm a woman. What is there about them that I shouldn't understand? Well, they never have any parents there. Well, Daddy will most certainly be out. And I shall only put in an appearance at supper time. I suppose that'll be all right, won't it? Yes. Yes, that should be all right. Oh, Mother, won't it be exciting? Do you think we could make it a really good party? You know, gin and ginger beer. I think we could manage that. I'll talk to Aunt Carrie. Mrs. Blake? Yes, Teddy? Are you sure Celia said three dozen ginger beers? That's what she ordered. Celia. Yes, darling? It's two o'clock. I haven't slept a wink. I think I'll go down. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> Is that what they call a party? They're enjoying themselves. I don't know what young people are coming to these days. Nice friends your daughter's found. Our daughter met most of them at Mr. Knight's. That's not the point. I'm afraid it is, Thomas. It was at the Knight's that Frieda met Bobby Hewitt. What's he got to do with it? The party's been given for him. I hope it won't turn out too much of a disappointment for her. There. That sounds as if they're going. Hmm. Or else still coming. No, no, no. I want one of Bobby alone. them both at the Ritz. She's an awfully pretty girl. Awfully pretty. You and I'll have to fall back on each other. Now that Bobby's deserted us, what? so early. Knight's going. Going? He's leaving. Says he's too far away from things. He's going back to London. Mrs. Knight will be pleased. Well, he's going. But that's not all, Celia. Are you ready for a shock? Yes. What is it? He wants us to take over Field Place. Field Place? We should be mad. Yes, when he mentioned it, I nearly had a fit. But we couldn't possibly afford it. He wants to get rid of it. He let us have it cheap. And you've never liked this house. But, my dear, it'd mean more furniture. Carpets, curtains. That's just it. This London house, Knight's bought it, furniture and everything. And he wants you to talk to Mrs. Knight about taking over a lot of the stuff at Field Place. Oh, Thomas. I can't believe it. 
I wanted Isabel to come with me, but she told me she couldn't leave her mother. Oh, I shall think of you all at Field Place when I get back to town. But I won't envy you. No, not a bit. London for me all the time. You wanted to get back there, I know. Isn't it curious the way all this has come about? I mean, your husband meets mine in the train. Lull takes him up. Oh, it's just like Lull. Full of kindness. I can't tell you how sorry I am that you're going. I shall miss you. If I need a bit of advice, may I run up to London to consult you? Well, of course, by all means. Ah, here comes the train. I couldn't get here before this. I nearly missed you. Oh. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, dear. I wish you were coming with me. Well, perhaps I'll be able to manage it oh, later good, on somehow. Good. You will write and let me know how things are, won't yes, you? Yes, I will, Margaret. <laughs> goodbye. 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 Is Garney. I don't want to lay you off. Thank you, sir. But I may be forced to. So if you see a chance elsewhere, well, I'll have no grievance if you take it. That's like you, sir. That's square talking. And Higgs. Sir. I've had a look at that machine. Oh, yes? The only thing for it is a collar on the shaft. Get Garney to put one on. Well, now, Mr. Blake, is it worth it? I mean, the machine itself wants scrapping. I know that, Higgs, but with orders falling off and bad debts mounting up, I don't feel like buying a new one. I've sunk far too much money in the works as it is. I know, sir. And I often wondered how you've kept us going these last few months. I've often wondered myself. Infant. Yes, yes, that's my call. Is that Mr. Knight's office? Blake. Thomas Blake, Trentham, yes. Oh, Knight, how are you? I've been trying to get you. Oh, just a little advice. Well, things have been going rather wrong since you left. Oh, for heaven's sake, explain yourself, man. Well, camports, for one thing. Camports? Well, any fool could have told you they were poison. And those B&Ts? Well, of course, you got in on a falling market. Look here, I'm a busy man. Uh, better come to lunch next Wednesday. Wednesday of next week, one o'clock. Thomas Blake. Put him next to... Uh... Lady Gilling. Oh, rather, yeah. Well, are you two going to put your shirt on Cosmos? Cosmos? You say you don't know what Cosmos is. What are you here for? I'm here because Mr. Knight asked me. He asked me, too. I wrote and asked him what to put my money in. And he said, Cosmos. It's going to make our fortunes. Sold all sorts of things to buy them. Hey, come back there. Eh? What you got? Chicken supreme, madam. All right, I'll have some. Black or white, sir? Black, please. Do you know Mr. Knight well? Oh, yes. He's done me some very good turns. Mm, he would. Kind man, nothing's too much trouble. And you know, he's almost a gentleman. <laughs> My lord, ladies and gentlemen, this is no occasion for speeches, and I'm not going to make one. But I will ask you, if I may, to charge your glasses and drink with me to what I confidently announce as my most supremely successful venture, Cosmos Consolidated. Cosmos Consolidated. I think I'll 
I'll go now and find my poor dog. I've put a bit of chicken in my bag for her. I'm glad to have met you, and I hope you make a nice fortune. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ah, oh, Blake. I'm so glad you were able to come. I meant to tell you earlier about this. Have you got this spare cash? Well, not much, but I could sell something. Well, sell then. Sell all you can. Put your last farthing into Cosmos. But quickly, see? Here, go into my office and ask for Brewster. He'll tell you all about it. And if I don't see you again, goodbye and good luck, old chap. Wife and family all right? Yes, thank you. Good. Buy me three? No. 500 Cosmos at 50 shillings. of it, the more I like it, Thomas. You have done well by your family. I couldn't have done it without night. Trade's slow, and keeping the works going is a bit of a worry. Oh? Well, anyhow, you'll soon have Douglas to help you. He's coming home this summer, isn't he? No, he's staying up at Cambridge to work. He's taking honours. Oh, <laughs> good man. And Ruth, I hear, keeps busy. Writing. <laughs> I don't think much will come of that. Still, it's nice to have her at home again. That's right, Grandmother. Fifteeny lenty. <laughs> French, eh? Isn't English good enough? I'm as bad as your Aunt Isabel, since she took up with that Mrs. Knight. But, Grandmother, I think she's improved. Huh? Improved for the worse. You needn't hold me up, girl. I'm not made of glass. Sorry, I can't wait for tea, Celia. Oh. Mrs. Knight's meeting me at Brighton with the car. I can just manage if I catch the 510. Isabel, don't fuss. I can run into the station from here in five minutes. So you're still here. Here you are, Mother. Did you have a nice sleep? Don't hold with those narrow beds. Never did. Why don't you straighten your back, girl? What have you got to droop about? Your tea, Grandma. I don't, I don't like this snippety afternoon tea business. I like the good old-fashioned sandwich, Grandmother. <sighs> Trying to stop my mouth, eh? When I was a girl... Yes, Grandmother, do tell me about when you were a girl. Well, I didn't interrupt my elders anyway. But I bet you often wanted to. Don't bother your Grandmother, Ruth. But she isn't bothering me, Thomas. I like her. She's a Blake. Well, Thomas. All right. Your tea, dear. I'll be back in five minutes. Bye, Mother. Have a nice time. A lot you care. <laughs> well, cheery bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Hmm. Cheery bye. At her age, dragging Thomas away. More tea, Carrie? Yes, thanks. Couldn't say no if I tried. I'll never be genteel. <laughs> <laughs> Visitor? Mr. Selby. Uh, good afternoon. I thought I'd come to tea. I hope I'm not going to disturb anyone. How do you do, Mrs. Blake? How do you do? Oh, and Miss Blake. This is my grandmother, Aunt Carrie. How do you do? I, this is cosy. I am in luck. Tea? Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Awfully good party last night, Frida. Oh, good party, was it? Oh, yes, first rate. I didn't get home till four in the morning. I stayed swapping arms with Godstone for hours and hours after the others had left. Awfully good chap, Godstone. Awfully good sense of humor. And what do you do for a living, young man? Nothing. Nothing? No, no, nothing. I see that's jolly nice tea, Mrs. Big. May I have some more? And what do you do with yourself? Oh, plenty. I get round quite a lot, don't I, Frida? Where was the party, Mr. Selby? Where Godstone's, Mrs. Blake. You know Finley Manor. You know the chap that keeps such marvelous sherry. Should do. His family ships it wholesale. Oh, I see. Do you know the Godstones? Oh, only in a business way. We buy from them. Oh, I see. You're wine merchants. Oh, not quite that. We keep the swan at Trentham. Oh, the swan. <laughs> you are a card. Am I? <laughs> that reminds me, we open at six. We'd best be getting along, Celia. I'll just call Teddy. 
What about tennis, Frida? Tennis? Tennis? Young man, it says six days shalt thou labor. You don't do that, you tell me. The least you can do is to keep the Sabbath day. Oh, come on, Coggy. Is Frida going to marry him, think you? Oh, no. She'd never marry him. Country, never get the morning paper until midday. Ah, no. We're early this morning. I'll be here in a minute. There they are. Thank you, Agnes. Here's your paper, Thomas. All for me. This one from Douglas. Thomas. Douglas is taking part one of his degree examination this year instead of waiting until next. Isn't it splendid? Good afternoon, Mr. Blake. Is Mr. Knight at home? No, sir. Mr. Knight is not at home. Is Mrs. Knight in? I'll just inquire, sir. Well, well. Mr. Blake, this is a surprise. How are you? Come this way. How are you all? You like living in Field Place, do you? That's right. Lovely house, isn't it? Pity it's in the country, I always think. Can you tell me where I can find Mr. Knight? Isn't he at his office? No. Oh. Is it business you wanted to see him about? No, not exactly. I know this Cosmos affair must have upset him pretty badly. It upset me. And, uh, well, with so many people abusing him today, I thought I'd like him to know I don't. Oh, well, that's a bit different. You know where he is? As a matter of fact, he's here. Here? Yes. You see, Mr. Knight told me not to tell anyone. After all, we can't have people running in and out abusing him just because some little thing's gone wrong. But perhaps it'll do him good to talk things over with you. But for God's sake, Mr. Blake, you won't let anyone know you've seen him? Oh, no, no. Lull? Lull? What do you want? Open the door, will you, dear? What do you want? Open the door, dear. It's Mr. Blake. What did I tell you? Keep back, Blake. What do you want? Is it as bad as that night? Get out, Morty. And don't be such a fool as to let anybody else up here. Is that what's worrying you? Ha! I'm only just clearing out my desk. Don't look so scared, man. I thought you might be even worse hit than I imagined. Hit by what? By Cosmos. Good heavens, no. You didn't lose on them? Lose? What do you take me for? If you got out and let the ship sink, I take you for what you are, a damned crook. Oh, I see. So you've lost money then? I've lost 10,000 pounds. All I had and more. Well, you were a damned fool. What did you do it for? Because you told me. Oh, can't you take care of yourself, men? Do you expect me to wet nurse you forever? I trusted you. I'll go home and play marbles. How many times do you think I lost every penny I possessed? And staked everything and won? You're a damned swindler. I'm not interested in your opinion, Blake. But your arrival is opportune. You owe me 2,000 pounds. And I want it at once. 
You want it now? Yes, I want it now. But I've just told you I've lost all I had. I can't help that. I want my 2,000. But I can't possibly pay. You know I can't pay. No, 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 Blake. I know nothing of the sort. You've got Field Place and you've got the works. And you've probably got a bit put away somewhere. But I haven't. I haven't a cent in the world now. Well, I can't help that. You must sell Field Place. Knight, you absolutely made me. And now you want to ruin me. Oh, turn off the tap, Blake, please. First you call me a damn swindler, then you call and say I made you. I wish you'd get out. I'm busy. I'll give you a fortnight. At the end of that time, I shall sue you. Sims! Where the devil's that man Sims? Sims! Sir. Show Mr. Blake out. And the next time you disregard my orders about letting people in, you'll have to find another place. You understand? I've been to London. You might have let me know. I kept dinner back. I've been anxious. I'm sorry. I suppose you had dinner on the train. No. I knew Mr. Knight would let you down sometime. Oh, for heaven's sake. All right, darling. Can't we manage 10,000 pounds? We ought to have more reserve than that. Everything's come at once. I need money for the works. Simpson threatens to call in his debentures. That's why I try to make on Cosmos. And Knight wants his 2,000 pounds for the house. Unless I can get 12,000 from somewhere, I'm done for. 12,000 pounds? And Knight says if I don't pay by the 23rd, he'll sue me. Thomas, he can't mean it. Oh, he means it all right. Does he mean to ruin us? I don't think he cares whether he ruins us or not. Simply means to get his money. Devil. I always knew he was. What can we do? My only hope is the bank. If they will let me have an overdraft. Of course they will. They know you. You've had an overdraft before. Oh, darling. Don't worry like this. It'll be all right. You'll see. Now you're going to have your soup. So that you'll get some sleep. And tomorrow, you'll see the manager of the bank. And everything will be clear. You'll see. My personal guarantee should count for something. It could be considered, Blake. You understand, of course, we'd require your balance sheet up to date. My accountant, unfortunately, is away ill. Well, you know the formalities, Blake. Good day. I knew the bank would agree to help you. Oh, I know the debt's only transferred, but we're free of Mr. Knight. We've finished with him, haven't we? Yes, we've finished with him. <sighs> well, come and have your tea. Celia, we shall have to leave this house. Oh, Thomas. I know. I'm very sorry. Will you mind very much? I shall. So will the children. If we did without servants altogether, 
and shut up part of the house, or, or let it off, and took in boarders, and made it into a sort of a hotel, and sold the vegetables and the flowers. Could we stay? I need the money. More money? But you've just got an overdraft for 10,000. I want to pay the bank back as soon as I can. But why? There's no sense in it. We won't expect to get the money back the day after you've borrowed it. I must reduce the overdraft as quickly as possible. I can't do it any other way. It may take months to sell this house. I put it into the hands of the agents today. Oh, we're always moving. We can't settle anywhere. Where do you want us to move to now? Back to the grove. The house is empty and it's still ours. Leave this house. How do you know? I heard Daddy say so. When? As soon as this house is sold. And Daddy doing with himself and us. It's appalling. He must be a complete fool about money. Frieda, damn. Where are we going to? Back to the grove. <laughs> that. Bless you, Carrie. I don't know how to thank you. <laughs> don't try. Seems I like being with you. Thanks. But you've quite enough to do already at the Swan. If only my mother was alive. She was a rare one. She'd have kept old Mrs. Blake amused. Do you know, Celia, I think the old thing's coming round at last. About time, after three months of your kindness. It's Baby that's doing it. The old lady says she's a Blake. <laughs> Thanks, though. I must be getting along. Annie's very good with baby, you know, but still. I know, but still. <clears throat> Any news of Isabel? No, not since that last postcard. I expect she's having too good a time with Mrs. Knight. Must be nice to shelve one's responsibility so easily. Oh, you mustn't be hard, my dear. It's not like you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Kate. I shall be popping round again soon. Yes, do. Come in whenever you can, will you? Yes, I like coming round. your rules? Why, Edward? Nothing wrong, I hope. Celia, are you prepared for the worst blow you've ever had? No, you're not. But I can't soften it. I've been arrested today. I'm out on bail, Edward's bail. It's no good mincing matters, I did it. I had to have the money to pay night and other expenses. The bank wouldn't have loaned it on a true statement of facts, so I made a false one. They found out too soon. Given a bit longer, I'd have paid them off. Now, I shall go to jail. Oh, Thomas. My darling. I've made a mess of things, Celia. I've made such a mess of things. I think I'll be going. Remember, get the very best man you can. Carrie said I was to tell you. We'll pay. We'll see you through. I'll be round in the morning. I knew something like this would happen. Well, uh, I suppose we're done for now. Frida. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Father. I'm just saying I... I knew this would happen. Well, I hope Mr. Knight is pleased with his bit of work. That's all. Ruth. Thomas, let me. Oh, Daddy, she... 
Is it true what they say in the papers? Yes, Ruth. It is true. Daddy. Don't mind, Daddy. You've got all of us. Don't mind about outsiders. We love you. What are we going to do? I don't know. Dad won't hear of me leaving Cambridge. I had to tell him how I'd taken science instead of engineering. I never thought he'd be thankful, but he is. Ruth, he looked so desperate when he asked me to do my best at Cambridge. He pulled the family up again. What worries me is mother. I shan't be with just when I ought to be. I shall be here. Yes. You'll be with her. And Frida. Frida. Hatching out some plan to get out of it all. Mother. Coggy and I were married this morning. Don't look like that, Mother. It's all right. It'll be all right. Oh, Frida. Why did you do it? Because I wanted to. It's a queer question to ask a bride, I must say. Why couldn't you have waited? Why must you always run away? You're young. Surely you could have borne this. But to marry Coggy Selby. Let not say anything about Coggy, Mother. He is my husband, you know. Here's your tea. Tea? Ask me to get it. Oh, Frida, if only I'd known where you were going. Now it's too late. It'll be all right, Mother. I must go. Coggy's waiting for me. But you're not going without seeing the others. You say goodbye for me, I I couldn't bear to. Well, I shall be back in a month at the latest. But your father. Goodbye, Mother. After careful deliberation, it remains manifest, in spite of the plea of extenuating circumstances so eloquently put for you by learned counsel, that the crime, for it is a crime, to which you, Thomas Cranford Blake, have pleaded guilty cannot remain unpunished. No. How do you know so well? I'm all right. Thank you. The penalty imposed should bid you reflect how carefully your own, as well as public probity, must be protected. You will go to prison for 12 months in the second division. <laughs> Night in. Mr. Knight is at home to no one. Oh, he's at home to me. Chief Inspector Burnley, CID. Uh, Mrs. Knight is not at home. No, sir. Mm, so much the better. Well, lead the way. Come along, Proctor. Get on with it. Where is he? Mr. Knight? Mr. Knight, sir? Stand aside. Why, the door's open, man.
I had to bring her away. The reporters and detectives were thick as flies in the house. There wasn't a moment's peace for her. He went out in the morning without speaking to me. I had some shopping to do, and when I came back... You mustn't think of it. I was so sorry about your husband. Terribly sorry. But I didn't know what to say, so I couldn't write. Now you see, I'm in worse trouble than you. It's this money. It's ruined both of them. The bed's ready. We'd better be getting upstairs. Bed's the best place. Come along, dear. There'll be nothing left, you know. Only her personal belongings. But I'll look after her. We're going to sell her furs and jewellery and take a little tea shop in Brighton. It's always full of people and <laughs> they have to eat. Very good idea. Oh, she'll be all right. She'll be better without him. She'll be better without him. What an epitaph for Mr. Knight. He died too late. He should have died before my son met him. Why did he do it? It can't have been because of Cosmos. No. Knight knew that the whole game was up. He was expecting to be arrested for fraud in a bigger matter. Oh, you're not going already. I think I must. I'm going to visit Thomas tomorrow. Oh, Celia. Here's a little something from Carrie and me, just to keep you going. Is there no end to Carrie's generosity and yours? I don't think I should. Just you take it and don't say anything to Carrie. I can't. Oh, she knows, but she doesn't want... I don't know how to thank you both. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Nevertheless, it's, it's terrible to feel so dependent. Now you know what I felt for the last 20 years. You'll give Mother the right kind of message for me, won't you, Celia? I'll try. Thanks. How's Ruth? She's working hard at her office. She's finished her novel, has some hopes of it. I'm very proud of Ruth, the way she stood by you all these months. And Douglas, too, getting a first. Isn't it splendid, Thomas? He writes that he's trying to get a job at Trenton School and is coming home. He mustn't do that. He may ruin his chances. He doesn't think so. Douglas is absolutely sure of himself. Yes. And Frida? She's still in the south of France with her husband. They're coming home soon. Darling, it won't be long before you're with us all again. No, not long now, but... Time's up, Heatherly. <clears throat> so long, Harry. Uh, so long, chum. Uh, bring some news next time, Forrest. Right, oh. So long. Will they lock him up, Thomas? No. He'll work until five o'clock. We're all locked up at five. Yes. That's when the loneliness begins. Oh, darling.
I'm getting on, aren't I, Mother? I never thought I'd be able to make a vest. You'll be surprised at the things you'll do before you're finished. You know, Mother, you've made everything look different to me. I hardly feel frightened at all now. Do you know, I think it's even going to be lovely. I suppose one of those darling little cockle shell borders would be quite wasted on that. Oh, nothing could be wasted. I intend to make everything as perfect as I can. Hello, Mother. I thought you were going to lie down. So I was. Never mind. I'll go to bed early instead. The last time, Mother. You'll never need to look at the clock like that again. I think I shall always want to look at it at five o'clock. But in a different way. I can't say I like her making that early start for Lincoln alone. She insists on it. Perhaps it's best. After all, by growing up and going our own ways, we've rather left her and Daddy to themselves. We can only love them and stand by. afraid that you'd regain your freedom feeling bitter and resentful. But now I know you're not. No. I'm not bitter or resentful. But I'm sad. Sad to think of what I brought on all of you. You've been sad long enough. You've paid. The account's settled. It hasn't been as bad for any of us as you thought it was. We've lost nothing that matters. I'm happier today. Far happier than when you brought me here 25 years ago. As for the children, Douglas has done splendidly. Ruth's been wonderful the whole time. Frida's marriage may not be an ideal one, but I think she'll be happy with her baby. I hope she will. So you see, darling, the children and I are all right. It's only you to worry about. Can you face your situation? Face pity? Curiosity? Perhaps even contempt? Be willing to take the little job where you've been master? Thomas, darling, can you begin again? Let's go home. 